Good afternoon on what is a bright, uh, mild and clear day. It is uh, Wednesday the 12th of January. I am back in the Reed Nook with a cat who is not ours and a nice hot cup of tea. And of course, a pile of parcels to unbox. And the next one I am going to unbox is this one. Get the knife. Go. Uh, what I'm going to pull here is this. Just slide this out. And uh, this is the Troubleshooters, um, an action role adventure role playing game um, published by. Um, Let's have a look. Uh, Helmgast, it's a Swedish role playing game uh, and it's distributed by uh, Medivis Entertainment. Um, and um, if you get the idea from the, just the cover artwork that A, uh, you're in Europe, uh, well, of course, you're in Europe because basically you've got the um, Eiffel Tower, uh, you've got a De Chaveur, Citroën De Chaveur, uh, a TCV, um, and Concorde in the background, um, you're about right. Uh, and if you get the idea that this is kind of a comic book kind of setting, you've also got that right. So, the Troubleshooters. <clears throat> Where in the world will your next adventure take you? Welcome to the Troubleshooters, an action tabletop, action adventure tabletop role playing game of international mystery. <clears throat> Set in the mid 60s in a world of mysterious temples hidden in the jungles, valleys that time forgot, and some mad scientists, space stations. Spies with super gadgets and villainous organisations scheming for world control, the characters live adventurous lives all over the world. Uh, no matter if it's a hunt for a lost treasure, helping someone get their inheritance, stopping spies from stealing military secrets, or foiling the octopus's evil plans for world domination, you just go on adventures, okay? And you need six-sided dice and percentile dice to play with the troubleshooters. So here we go. That's what it looks like in the back. So we've got a picture of the dice, uh, equipment cards, passports. Basically, I think those are the character sheets. And then you've got the first adventure, which is the U-Boat Mystery. Because um, I don't think there's an adventure in here. But, um, get that out. Uh, and open up inside, okay. Um, and what we've got inside is portraits of sort of like action and characters. Um, and this automatically, just looking at this, is... Um, uh, it's reminding me of um, the Tantan uh, stories by Hergé, um, or the, the Blake and Mortimer stories as well. That's called sort of um, uh, band, band de Dissonay, um comic book style um, that uh, was really popular sort of like um, in sort of 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Because um, I can remember growing up reading the, the, the Tantan stories um, at school and beyond, and they, I mean, um, I haven't read them for a while, but I probably would enjoy them. I did, um, and so uh, these. This is a role-playing game then, um, set in that milieu of um, <clears throat> basically the jet age of international travel, mystery, um, um, and uh, as you can see, there's just more of it here. Um, at, uh, where you can see these characters in action, including you know, basically you've got like a shot of you know uh, the, the, the moon rocket, um, which echoes that of um, uh, Tintin on the moon. Um, so um, the, this role playing game is very it's very knowing in in, in its source material. Um, and uh, we open up, we've got the introduction. And this is almost done cartoon style with, uh, you see we've got these um, uh, speech bubbles. Um, and the, these characters talking to you and telling you about the game. Um, I really like that. That's give, gives, it's giving it a very um, individualistic um, feel. Uh, and this uh, if you, um, even that is, that's very like the, the poster, like, you know, um, like a 60s um, cinema poster with, with all the, the, the portraits of the characters across in little boxes. 
um, that really works um, and inside it's really bright and sort of like really nice and clean so you, you, it's using bold colors um, and just to get a feel for it I, I do like this it's, it's a great looking book um, and then so here we've got an example of play how does it work and um, so um, here we have um, essentially uh, the characters we saw earlier actually being used to play show, show you how the game works um, I think this guy here is the referee he might be the villain because um, you can see him on the front cover there just in the background watching events um, so yeah so this is about um, a game of action and adventure with a competent cast um, um, at, uh, what else let's have a look uh, fun and friendship in the past when it was better so in the 60s and 70s um, and presumably it's an alternate 60s because there's a different moon landing uh, there um, <coughs> also Eurocentric and metropolitan and international cooperation cooperation um, and I gotta admit that kind of feels really refreshing these days um, you know um, 60 years on from the 60s it feels incredibly uh, refreshing um, to have a role-playing game like that um, so I've got an explanation of how the dice work and it's a percentile dice system um, so easy to grasp if you've done a bit of role-playing um, and early on what I like is, is, is you've got that's good, terms of glossary okay so that's giving you everything you need um, and then we get into the characters and and there we have a, another great shot of, of the characters I mean done in sepia not necessarily full color but it really works um, you know almost like a police mug shot um, so you basically create a team around themes and here we've got an explanation of the themes and oh, the other thing is basically so, so we've got the bottom of the themes and also sort of the themes suggested like curious adventures and slews and agents and, and heists but at the bottom we've got ex um, I think these are example um, uh, inspiration so um, let's have a look for curious adventures there we go um, and then we've got slews and it's not just uh, I saw the basically not just comics but it's referring to the saint uh, television series uh, from the late 50s and early 60s with Roger Moore um, and so on um, and uh, so we talk about roles within the team and again really making use of sort of like um, the character types um, I don't think those are necessarily um, those aren't members of the, the, the cast here I think because they're not being used in these bubbles because um, um, so here's creating a character and it's done by, by these speech bubbles um, you know there's the guide uh, the young girl basically step by step to, like um, going through and it's template based so you obviously you pick a template and then take the skills um, and some abilities and so on um, but the yeah okay so so it's fairly easy and then we've got a template so here we have the templates themselves so um, adventurous um, scholar or a caring veterinarian and so on and you can just sort of like build characters out of those fairly quickly um, and then what will basically um, so I think the characters also have plot hooks and the plot hooks are sort of designed to bring you into the into the, into the scenarios and get you involved and pull you in um, you know at, uh, so and then skills and how skills work um, and that's a list of all the skills so it's not actually that many and um, so like basically so they're fairly broad so um, let's have a look so you've got agility alertness languages machinery and ranged combat so and they're quite broad so ranged combat and melee hands handles all the um, basically combat science handles um, uh, <coughs> 
basically the types of science and that sort of thing. Um, so it's very cartoony um, or comic books or kind, kind, of, kind, of, kind of skills. Um, and also the other thing looking at this, you've got things like agility um, and endurance and strength. So you've got those as skills rather than as stats or abilities. Uh, so yeah, um, and then abilities as well, like boxer or actor, several tables of those, and you can pick up more presumably, but they're your core, but you have a couple of those at the start. Uh, and then action, we get on to how to play the game. So I really like the artwork in here, it's really fantastic, I can't, um, um, and presumably what, I mean what I like about this is you've got this idea here, the image of, of the one character being chased in a lance here by, uh, essentially you've got an Aston Martin DB5 in the background, um, and they're racing, and um, so look, it, it's, it's clear essentially that you get to this point that there's sort of some sense of story going on. Um, through the examples as well, and that's well just that, that looks well designed. But, uh, so, yeah, more of that great artwork, and you can see it's, there's a continuing story as well because the, the, the girl is in the in the in 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 in, in the um, other car. That's what else we've got. So that's handling combat um, things like. Um, So, um, attack options. This is fun. Um, okay, so you've got attack options. Um, whoomp, uh, melee throw or grapple, or bam, aim shot. Um, so you've actually, that's what you're doing. That's not, that's actually sort of what, that's the action they're killing you there. Uh, and the rat attack, attack, ranged attack, empty weapon. That's a nice touch. So it gives you a bit of color. So we've got a full combat example as well. Again, using the speech bubbles. Um, let's get a bit further deeper into the book. So, rules for story points and how they work. Uh, so, the tone of this looks is actually again, you know, like in the um, uh, like in the Tintin books, it's fairly positive and um, upbeat. Uh, you've got voice of equipment as well, and it's all really very well, clearly, cleanly laid out as well. Um, and you know, uh, and very European. I mean, you know, basically, you look at the um, uh, uh, car there, a uh, French car there, DS9. Um, but, uh, DS9, it's a, it, it, it's, it's, um, in a way, it, it's the uh, um, Citroen sedan whose name escapes me. Uh, weird tech, okay, presumably you can have that in the hands of the villains, or if you've got a tech whiz character, you know, they can build a gadget here. Um, but, uh, and then the world of troubleshooters. Um, so it's got a discussion of the zeitgeist and how it's different to it's not your grandmother's Europe. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, that's fun. I like that. It's basically, I mean, that's talking to not a player of my age, but it's talking to a player, you know, um, who's sort of playing d and who's sort of like, who's reasonably, who's, I suppose, is relatively new to the hobby, uh, you know, teens, twenties, and you know, their grandmother would have been you know, growing up or, you know, coming, coming, you know, being an adult in the 60s. Um, you know, pretty much as mine were, actually. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, but it's got, we've got things got like nine glorious countries that don't exist. Um, things that all, don't or almost exist. There's no CDs or cell phones. Um, the EU doesn't exist yet. Uh, no food fr franchises or home video. Things that do exist, cigarettes, housing, jobs, long distance phone, te telephone calls. Um, <clears throat> you've got the sort of like the continuing rise of um, youth culture as well. Um, we've got a discussion of the Cold War. Only great br brief detail, it really doesn't have to, you know, it, it, that's easy to, to research, that sort of thing. Um, and then, you know, so we're looking at sort of like um, 
trains, planes, and automobiles are getting around and method because essentially it's, 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 it's a big thing about um, uh, to um, travel. Um, uh, it basically, it's a big age of travel um, by various means. Um, and then we've got oh, what a wonderful one! This is a guide to Berlin. So, guide to Berlin, and that's a, essentially so that's 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 a couple of pages there. And what we've got um, so how to get to West Berlin, where to stay, um, but, uh, and even there's a discussion there on challenge of getting to East Berlin. And then things to do in Berlin and why is, why Berlin is in your adventures. So it's interesting there that I'm kind of reminded, just looking at these, of um, a segment called Thrilling Adventure, Thrilling Locations, which is which I've done an unboxing of for the James Bond 007 um, uh, role playing game. Um, and there's something in there called Thrilling Locations, which it's all like it's a guide to all the big cities around the world. And this feels very similar to this, but obviously, whereas that is kind of pitched a sort of like a tone of, okay, where's the greatest hotels, um, places to eat, that sort of thing. Um, this feels a bit more, um, I don't know, geared towards slightly, more obviously geared towards straight adventure, straightforward adventure, I think, rather than necessarily espionage. There's no reason why, I'm not saying you can't do an espionage a, a, a style game with um, the troubleshooters, and it's perfectly set up for that. Um, it's perfectly set up for doing any number of sort of like action adventure TV series from the period, uh, whether that's The Man from Uncle, uh, The Persuaders, or The Protectors, um, stuff like that. So you also got Hong Kong and uh, Ice Station X14, Leningrad, um, Kyoto, um, and so on. Um, no London. I have a problem with that. No, that's fine. Um, uh, quick guide to France and Paris. Um, uh, it's a quite a big section on Paris actually, but that's fine because it's kind of be like the, the centre point of your um, the starting point of your adventures really. Um, it's the European city, whatever you, you know, it, it, it's almost, it is the capital of Europe at this point. Um, it's such a big popular city. Um, and then for the, for the director's section, we have a guide. Basically, there's a guide here. So yeah, that, I think that's essentially that's, that confirms. He's the you know that's a really nice sort of meta thing where you have um, the actual cast that they've been using as, as sample characters playing the game with the GM in the background there. That's a nice touch. Uh, what else we got here? Um, guide creating adventures, that sort of thing. Um, running them and octopus. I think mean, that's going to be the basically the equivalent of um, Spectre or Smirsh or Tarot, depending upon which variation upon James Bond you are dealing with. Um, but uh, or Thrush, uh, is it thr yeah, it's, it, it, it's Thrush in um, Man from Uncle. So you know, basically, here is your, that's your um, your criminal organisation which you can um, deal with, and you've got sort of like the technology of, of, um, of octopus, and then the the, um, the, the octopus and you. Uh, and then the threat files, which is, deals with all the characters um, they might encounter, um, like members of the mob. So yeah, that's um, uh, the troubleshooters. Uh, it's a really good-looking game. Um, uh, and uh, oh yeah, there's another the thing I did see is um, there's a table of profanities. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's essentially, uh, profanities um, like Sabre de, uh, de Bois, or Wooden Sword, um, um, but, um, it's, um, yeah, uh, basically profanities that aren't profanities, essentially um, swear words that aren't swear words that uh, you can say and uh, still get that PG rating. Um, so yeah, this is the troubleshooters. Um, which is a really lovely looking book. I have actually had a chance to play this and I did enjoy it. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what was going on, um, but I'm looking forward to digging into this um, and giving it a proper review. Uh, the review will re appear down below. Um, at, uh, this is available um, uh, to buy from your nearest um, friendly local um, gaming shop, I suppose, or you can get it online. But if you, if you like, 
if you want looking forward for if you're looking for a an optimistic um, positive kind of action adventure role playing game I think this is really quite a, a good candidate especially if you like uh, the European adventure comics like Tantan or Mortar and, Bla Mortar and Blake, especially Tantan, because that's the one that's going to be familiar to most of a Western audience. Um, I think this is really good. I really like the look of it. Anyway, um, I hope you have enjoyed this unboxing. If you have, please do click the like button down below. And uh, if you've got any comments or feedback, I appreciate you posting those. And lastly, if you want to be alerted, you get more unboxings in the look where you will see me out here uh, with. Um, stack of parcels and a book or game which I will unbox and talk about to the best extent of my knowledge for roughly 10 minutes or so all of course accompanied by a cat who's not mine and a nice hot cup of tea then please do hit that subscribe button in the meantime thanks again for watching and I'll be back again soon with another unboxing the look bye for now